are live with our counter offer episode 14 14 we are getting people already tuning in they can't wait we're getting messages i just tuned in live so this week uh it's quite interesting in new york city it's very different vibe do you feel the vibe there's a different vibe going around in the city <laughs> And uh, it's you got the vibe. Charles. I haven't I haven't felt this vibe in a while. So, would you like to start the good vibes? Yeah, you know what? I have the perfect article for the good vibes. The good vibes just came out 14 hours ago. Okay. NYC remains the most expensive real estate market in the world. Oh my gosh! Really? Over Tokyo, London, in the world, Dubai. That's incredible. Moscow. In the world. Wow. Most expensive. And I would say that's pretty counter to the typical news that you'd be hearing. Yeah. That yeah. is 100% the counter to all the news you're hearing. Uh, for the United States, you know, a lot of the property markets that were hot are fizzling out. And, you know, look around the global economy and, you The know, balance is shifting. It's hard to try to find yeah. a market that would be better. So... It's funny how the news has kind of come back to reflecting the reality yeah. of, yeah, you know, it's New about York time. City real estate is expensive yep. and it holds its value, yeah. especially compared to the other markets. It's not getting bigger, the island. Right. They are not really building for anyone other than 3,500 to 4,000 to 5,000 a square foot. There's low inventory. There's low inventory. So any new construction is just going to be high-end construction. So yeah. anyone else that's been working here, and especially Google, you know, there was someone that came in on Sunday at the open house. You know, obviously Google, you have a lot of tech companies. They have great salaries, great benefits, great bonuses. And the people that they're competing with is like anyone at a bank or maybe publishing or finance. And it's, 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 it's a lot of competition out there. So especially that like sweet spot for what it should trade for. So right. like a studio, 500, one bedroom, 750, two bedroom under a million. Then you start, that's like what it should trade for. Obviously, there's different categories within those, especially if you go to the Upper West Side. That's, that's very, very different. I'm actually going to piggyback off you, and I'm going to go to the fake news of the week. So this is funny. Altos came out with a report that the year is going to be flat. That was the title. Home prices expected to be flat for the year. Okay. So that's what people read. That's the Twitto Twitter part. And then you go into it and they say, we are two months into the 2023 season. And even though Altos is reporting surprisingly resilient home buying activity, <laughs> they still say demand is going to wane. Even though the data is saying that there is great activity. This is what we're talking about, is that it doesn't make, you are going against the data. The data, and they go into it, is because there's not inventory. There's no inventory. People aren't moving, because if you move, you have to find another house. What's the question they ask? Where am I gonna move? Right. If I can't find a place, where am I gonna move? So that, that's a perfect example from your article, which is positive. This one is a negative title, but actually, it's counter to what the title talks about. We're, we're seeing something different, but have at it. Yeah, interesting. I've never heard of Altos. Yeah, well, ironically enough is that they actually came out, so that it's national, and they came out and they said two articles, two days, I'm sorry, two days before that it's going to be a great year to buy. Huh. So they're even countering what they're actually talking about. So that's why you got to tune in every oh, single week. Wow. Okay. Well, Let's go into your third. Uh, Fed says overvalued commercial real estate is, uh, poses a serious risk to the financial system. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Who reported that? The Federal Reserve. Okay. Those guys who are raising interest rates, who have basically made it so that the commercial real estate market is posing <laughs> a, a yeah. risk to the financial system. Yeah. Uh, we create the problem and we have the solution, but here's another problem. I would say that the problem <laughs> is definitely uh, rising rates, obviously, that environment, but also the uh, there's a lot of, you know, red tape 
you got to go through yep. for the development. Yep. Uh, as well as the change to crazy from, amount of red tape. Yeah. Like, well, because then they could do you know commercial could change to residential like we've talked yep. about or you know pivot. In Did you talk ways. about the first building that was yeah on yeah. Wall Street? Yep. Um, so, anyways, the and then the last thing is the work from home. Yep. So. You know, talk to uh, someone yesterday. Yeah, and think about this home. office. There's a lot yeah. of people who uh, use WeWork because of the hybrid model. Yeah. So there is a big risk. With big companies are going towards that way and too. And you know, you look through the news, and all over the country, there are major defaults on some big, big commercial yeah. buildings, which, you know, gigantic. Yeah. Like. Big. Bill projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you add it together, it's billions. And oh yeah. When yeah. It's, Even certain projects are worth a billion, probably. Yeah, yeah so. and they're, and these are big names, too. So it's not yeah. like Eric and I are going out there raising money. Like, they have <laughs> a established track record track record of good investments. So it's, it's very interesting. Talking about good investments, everyone's favorite company to hate on is Compass. They just came out with their quarterly earnings. And year over year, so they posted a $601 million net loss. And as the CEO Refkin said, he quoted, it was a very difficult year. I know a lot of people do not like Compass. It's clear in the comment section. And a lot of them are from <laughs> firms that either they poached someone or they just don't like the way that they're vibing or whatever. Personally, you know, and I know Ryan Sirhan has said this publicly on his Instagram page, but I agree is that if they fail, which we hope we don't, that leaves the same companies that have been around that are not innovate, innovating at all. They're not adding video. They're not adding much to the consumer. You know, at least Compass, when I went to visit them in 2014, and they were saying, hey, listen, when you come aboard before I started this company, I looked around and I said, I've never seen tech engineers at a real estate company. I've never seen as many marketers. I've never seen so many designers. So yes, it costs a lot of money, but you know, I don't know what your feelings are on it, but I, I know once this goes public on you know, the, the Instagram, it'll be interesting what the comments are. You know, I mean, I'm just trying to wrap my head around. It was 600, the, but it was the year. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, you know, the decrease in revenue actually isn't that much, especially compared to other companies, yeah. a 6% decrease in year over year revenue. So they just got to stop spending so much money. I mean, you have to yeah. wonder where, what they're spending all that money on. Yeah. Like they made 6 billion in revenue, but they lost $600 million. Well, what's interesting is they lost in 2021, 494. So this is a hundred over a hundred billion dollar, or I'm One sorry, hundred. Hundred million, no, because the other one was four ninety four. This is six one billion. <laughs> six hundred and one plus five hundred million, roughly, would be one. Well, no, this is billion. this is the loss in twenty twenty one. Yeah, so two years they lost one point one billion. Oh, you mean total? Yeah. yeah, I mean year over year yeah, to lose a so hundred million in just one year. Yeah, oh, yeah. hundred million in one year, different. Like, oh, where yeah. is a hundred million going? Yeah. In one year, that's crazy. Because the revenues yeah, did not decrease enough. All their money on. It's spending. It's not revenues. Yeah. Well, that that's the question. Is the only way then to counteract that is to either decrease the splits with the agents, offer them less, or start charging the agents for desk fees. Those are the really the only options. Because you're kind of looking at the landscape, and if the landscape isn't bringing in more sales, you can't generate sales of sales aren't happening you know you can't like stir it so it'll be very interesting i know you know if they lost no money oh very that, different story that would go very different story the roof yes uh yes so they got to rein in the spending somehow yeah cut those executive compensation packages it's going to be very interesting because <laughs> Um, I, I know people that are there and, and they've actually felt it in the company by having accountability meetings, one-on-ones more often. In other words, like what is going on with your business? I mean, $6 billion of revenue is great. Yeah. I mean, I would say there's not many real estate companies that do that. Yeah. If he, that could be the most, I mean, one of them at least. Yeah. And, uh, that's where they just got to make money. I mean, that's the point of a business. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, <laughs> I hope nothing happens to them, but that's a big that loss. Article? That was... The real trend. Surprise, the real trend. surprise. Gosh, this guy is just a hater. He, <laughs> I'm bringing you the best news, and he's just saying that it's a bad source. It's a great source. No, it's a, good, it's, it's yeah. a fact. So. Yeah. All right. It's a fact. <laughs> it's a fact. They're losing money. Hand over fist. Well, until next Thursday, we will see you with some uh, additional news and headlines, and we shall talk about it. Let's make it positive. Let's make it positive. Everything <laughs> from now out is positive. Pollyannas. Talk to you guys. <laughs>